Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to delve uh, a bit deeper into variables uh, before we proceed with developing our unit converter. Um, let me put an example here. Let's say I have variable 1 is equal to 17. Now, what that means that this first variable does not contain the 17, but it just points to that object which is that number 17. If I create a second variable, so now I've created a second variable which points to the first variable. This in turn points to the object 17. So now if I find out what values do these variables point to, one, and 17 both. Now, one thing about Python is that variables, Python is, so, is a so-called dynamically typed language. That means that the variables can contain numbers, or they can contain strings, or they can contain anything else. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so I can just say var1 is hello, okay? And it's perfectly legit. So if I go now value var1, now it is hello. Okay, so um, that is another aspect which makes um, uh, Python a, a slightly slower than other languages because it is dynamically typed. So that means the application, when you run your program, uh, the application has to go through each variable and say, oh, what type are you? And then do some work with it. And that is a slight slowdown versus other languages. I'll show you, for instance, let me show you a C program. So here's a, here's a C program. And you see here, uh, forget about all that stuff. Here's the important stuff. Look at that. That's, that's a first variable, but that is already defined. This is defined as an integer. This is also defined as an integer, and the result is also defined as an integer. So that is a statically typed language because you cannot define a variable. You cannot define any variable in C without defining what type is it. Yeah, and this is what you don't have to do in Python at all. So that's why here C is called statically typed, whereas Python is a dynamically typed language Basically, language doesn't care whether you have a 17 in there or a hello. Right, let's uh, take that off. So, okay, now, next question is, so now we know that Python is a dynamically typed language. That means the variables can contain either numbers or strings or whatever. Now, other question is, I, I had variable 1 point to 17. Now, it's pointing to hello. What would variable 2 point to? Well, Variable 2 was, is pointing to variable 1, which was pointing to the object 17. So basically, variable 2 is still pointing to the 17. Variable 2 has not been updated to hello. Yeah, and if we check out the value, and we see it's still pointing to the 17. Now, if I re-update uh, variable 2, obviously, uh, sorry, I just mistyped the... Uh, yeah, another thing there is a perfect uh, way to, to learn that. Uh, there's a difference in variable names, whether using capital or lowercase letters. Uh, var, capital V, va, sorry, var1 with a capital V is not identical to var1 with a, with a lowercase v. So uh, obviously here, it, it just complained that var1 does not exist. Var1 with a capital V. Uh, there you go. Now that should be better. And now if I go and say what's var2, then it is hello. You see, so now it has the, 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 the var2 has not been updated to point to the hello object. Nobody's pointing anymore to the 17 object. So that object gets destroyed and removed from memory. So that, that's the way things work. Right. Now, another thing what you can do with variables is if you have a variable, let's say var3 and that is uh, I don't know like 12.52 
Now you can also find out what type that is. What type is this thing? So you just say type var3 and if you go return, it tells you that's a float. A float is basically a number, a decimal number. Yeah. If I go to var3 now, make that to 25, then if I say what is the type uh, of uh, var3, so I get an int. An int is an integer, basically a number without decimals. And if I say what is the type of var1, what do you expect? Well, var1 has got this hello thing, and hello is so-called string, so I should expect string here, str. There you go. So here you can find out what type uh, uh, each of your variables is by um, doing this type function. This is another typical example of a function as we have seen with print, as we have now seen with round, that basically function name, open paren, and close paren. In this case, type takes only one variable, uh, one argument or parameter, and that is, the, uh, in this case, the variable, right? Um, you can also change uh, the type of, of, a, of a variable. Uh, for instance, I mean, obviously, the hello cannot be changed to a number. But what you can do is, if I take, for instance, um, var3 is equal to um, 33, let's say, and now I wish to convert that to a, th to a string. So if I say like um, uh, string, and that's, that's another method, it's called string, and what that, may, what that does, it converts a number to a string. So string var3, okay? And now, now I get 33, but within single quotes. This is not a number. This is a string, okay? So let's, let's do it a bit better. Let's say var4 is equal to a string of var3. Okay, so now let's see what is type of var4. It is a string. What is the type of var3? Oops. It is an int. So you see, and uh, var var4. If you if you if you look at the value of, of var4. It is 33 in single quotes. If you look at the value of var3, it is 33, the number. Okay, so, so this is an important thing. Also, you can convert, uh, obviously, uh, uh, an integer to float. So if I say like var5 is equal to float, that's another function, just like string, like str, like str. Just type in the function name, open paren, uh, put in the argument or parameter in there. In this case, all you know, var3, close paren, and that's it. Now, let's go var5. And there we have it. Now, this is a float. That means it is not 33, but 33 point something, in this case, 0. So, now you can see how you can convert numbers to strings or um, to uh, integers to float. How do you convert to integers? Well, that's pretty simple. Let's say var6 is equal to int and then var5. So, and if I type in var6, what kind of value does it have? Well, it has <coughs> the 33, not the 33.0. So, here, that's a string, that's a float, and that's an int or integer, okay? Um, so this is the kind of stuff, that kind of, these kinds of operations are co also called casting because you cast one, uh, uh, the variable from one type to another type. And this, this is called casting in multiple languages. 
uh, and that basically just means the same thing that you basically change the type of um, of 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 of, uh, of the variable from one class of object, let's say integer or float, to another type of object, let's say string or whatever. Okay. And um, another thing that you can do with variables is, uh, especially in Python, is um, the, the, what happens when you do that plus that. So what happens if I say like var6, or let's say, yeah, uh, var6 plus uh, var3. Now what's happening here is, uh, oh sorry, not var6, but let's do var5. Uh, var5 is a float. var3 is an integer. What, what kind of result do we get? I expect the float because that's what Python does. It takes integer and float and renders the result as float. Let's see, there we go. We have 66.0, yeah? And if you want to find uh, find out what type it is, just like, let's copy. So let's see, what type is this addition? And we see it is a class float. So basically, if you add an integer with a float, then the, 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 the result is a float. Uh, what happens if, uh, let's see, let's see var4, what is the type of var4? Is it still an str? Yes. What's the type of uh, var3? It is still an int. What happens if I add these two? Uh, okay, let's try it out. var3, our int plus var4, our string. Hmm. I got an error. Why? Because you can't combine two types. Now, there's one way of doing it. I'd have to cast one of them to, I'd have to cast the var3, which is an int. I'd have to cast that to a string or cast the var4 back to an int. Let's, let's cast that one to a string. So basically, if I now say str, var3 oops str var3 okay plus var4 now what happens here here where I've converted that to a string that is a string anyways what happens here when you add two strings in Python, you get something called concatenation. They don't get added up. I'm not getting a 66, but what, what I'm getting is 33 and 33 as a string. So I'm getting a long string, 3333. Three, three, three. And there you go. Yeah, that is concatenation. I can also take it a step further. Let's copy that. And add in between another string. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm now concatenating three strings. First, that variable three converted to a string, then any random string, and then variable four. And now we get three, three, yo, 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 three, three. There you go, okay? Now, let's take the, the, same, the same addition as here, and this time convert the, the var four to an int. Now here, the, the plus uh, sign signifies something else. Here we have an int, and here this string has been converted to an int. So here we, we are adding two ints. So here I, I should expect 66, and that's what I get. So you see here that plus sign acts differently depending on the types of variables you have. If you have strings, then you have a concatenation process, yeah, as, as seen here. Whereas if both are numbers, then obviously ints or floats, it doesn't matter. I mean, just to prove it to you, I mean, 
I can then put it like this, float. And there you go. So, um, like I said, if you have two strings and you and you use the plus sign with, with, with two or more strings, you get concatenation, as we've seen here. If you use the plus sign with one or more uh, numbers, be they float or int, you get an addition. So this is the kind of stuff that I wanted to explain um, around variables and um, what you gotta watch out for. Now, finally, and that's a very important thing, especially as you delve deeper into programming, be it Python or any other language, it doesn't matter, is to give um, clear variable names. And I mean, all these variables, all these variables names that I've been using now the whole in this video, they are unacceptable. I mean, you don't know what they mean. What does var3 mean? What does it stand for? I mean, yeah, obviously there's a value behind it here, but what, you know, what does it mean? I don't know. So it's better to use clear names for your variables. For instance, um, that, is a, that is a clear variable. Uh, Something like that is not very clear because you might now, you, yourself, the programmer, might know what that means today. In one year, you wouldn't know what that means. And in one year or even tomorrow, if somebody else is using your code, they wouldn't know what that is. So uh, if you use something like that, you would then have to add uh, 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 a comment, a comment uh, saying, oh, you know, num of ch means number of children. Whereas here, you don't need any comments because it's pretty clear what that is. Now, you can use underscores to separate multiple words. Other people prefer this so-called uh, so camel case. It doesn't matter which system you use. Uh, the convention is to start variable names with small letters, but it doesn't matter if you wish to use capital letters. The main thing is to use your system and to follow through, to be consistent. You know, that's very important because the, the convention is that um, with variable names, you start variable names with lowercase letters, whereas uh, later on when you see what a class is, classes get written in big letters. Uh, start off, sorry, start off with a capital letter. And um, so, the, but these are only conventions. Now, it's up to you to whether you want to follow conventions or not. If you wish to share your code or you wish, or you, you're planning to have other people re read your code, then it makes sense to follow conventions. If uh, you're just doing it for yourself and you don't care, well, then do your own conventions, follow your own conventions. Just mind you that Python does not allow any um, spaces between the individual words. So you'd have to use something like an underscore or a hyphen or a camel case. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And um, obviously, like I mentioned in the previous video, um, you know, just 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 uh, spruce your, your application or your code with, uh, with comments just to explain to yourself uh, what's going on here and, and to others, should others uh, you know, uh, 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 see the code as well. And the thing is, the, the nice thing about commenting is that you can, with comments, you can clarify your thoughts. I mean, you can start any program, uh, you know, with, let me, let me, let me give you an example. Uh, let me just open a file here because that, uh, that kind of stuff cannot be done here in this interactive mode. But I can just uh, start off like that and say uh, this module calculates the age of the person. Okay, so that's that's one. So first, I need the person's birthday. 
okay then I need a current date then I need and so on you see so uh, let me let me let me just finish that so here is for instance this is this sort of comment is very helpful if, if you just explain this model calculate stage to person and then you can hear a list the stuff that you need you basically mentally go through the process what the program has to do all right and then and then once you have that process clear you can then start coding and then you can say okay first i need the person's birthday so here then you, you type in the python code which is uh, uh you know needed to get that person's birthday then here you, you type in the, 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 the Python code where you need to get the current date and the current month and so on. So, but these comments give you a sort of an outline the way you write a, you know, the way you write a story, you need an outline and the comments in this case give you a certain outline of how to um, uh, build your program and you can still keep the comments, basically convert this, this big comment into line comments and then your, your, your application would first of all have this outline and then have the code in there and, and, and anybody reading this, this, this code would understand your thought process and the way you went about the program and if they need to modify anything they know exactly where to modify that, modify that program or where to improve that program. So comments are pretty important. I know they're often neglected as is with the you know, correct variable naming. But I find these are two important topics which uh, would ease your programming career significantly.